Um, he has been a lot of problems since he came to the facility. Um, he has been changed to different units um, before he came down to B. Then he was transferred to the control unit. Um, before when he came up to the control unit, he stayed in our padded cell for a while. Um, he's destroyed, tried to destroy state property. He just he didn't ha he has over restitution to the state for destruction of state property. I mean, he's really been a handful. He's just started coming down these past few weeks. Um, in a day, it just because he didn't get a radio because we just did the new radio system where the upper levels are getting radios and he tore a book up a few days ago and he tore a school book up and now destruction of state property. So I told him that he would not more likely get his level, his uh, next level, which is a level two where he could get the radio and he got upset. And that's when I'm trying to de-escalate the situation by telling him we can do a week to week evaluation of his behavior and if he has a consistent positive behavior, then we can do probably do a level change and give him his level that it was he was past he was past that point then he was already had geared himself up he was already hyped up ready to go so I couldn't calm him down he was already set in his mode and I think because the camera crews was here and uh, and then the officers some of the officers he has problems with were here so he just and then the, it doesn't help that his peers seem to join in and make him hype him up a little bit more so he really got into himself and just refused and he already shut down so any communications I was giving him he's already had shut down on me. So do you know as an officer, you know, when you've gotten to that point, can you tell when there's just no turning back and there's... Usually, you know, I, when I try to talk to him and if he had came to the door a few times and was getting ready to give me the broom up and he, then his peers start talking or he started thinking about it and he just refused. He, he was just adamant. He, at that point, I know he wasn't going to give it up. Tell me about the peer pressure. Oh, that's constant. I mean, you have kids and that... You know what, start by saying peer pressure, that's constant. That, I mean, the peer pressure, that's constant. That is real constant in these, in, with these um, offenders. I mean, you have kids that will start off by telling them, just bring up a situation that's passed like months and months and months. And these kids have been in the general population. And a lot of these kids haven't been in general population in like eight, nine months. And they'll bring an old situation up and get two offenders going at each other all night long. And they'll sit back and laugh at the situation. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a constant peer pressure problem over here. So there's instigators, they Yes, a lot of instigators, and they don't seem to understand that, and I try to make them understand that these people are, these, unif these offenders out here are not their friends. They are just, you are just somebody to pass time with until they leave. And they don't, some of them seem to get it and some of them don't. When the light click on, you'll know because they'll start getting their levels and they'll start trying to get out of here, but a lot of times the light don't click on until it's too late. So that's what I deal with every day. I mean, it's a con I mean, it's a job out down here. It's a constant struggle with these offenders because you have to get them on a good day. If you get them on a bad day, this is what we get. This is what we get. So why do you still do it? What what drives you? I mean, I just love my job. I love doing this. I love. I mean, if I if I help one student, then that's all. It, that's that's all I need. I love I love my job. I love being somebody I can help somebody. And if I help one of these students get out this program and be successful in life, then I did my job. Okay. As a matter of fact, you can start getting up, folding up your blankets now. Put them chips down. Mama, I know you're hungry. <laughs> no, no, they're gonna put everything up. You're gonna put your um, put your mats back over there. Put the um, monkeys back over there. We can do that while you know you're waiting for the next person to get dressed. Okay. And make sure we put in the book, everybody. 106, 104, Wait. 102, refuse they snack. Okay, 102, yeah. 104, 106. Right. We're going to put the, um, we're going to put the residents name. Okay. It was Mayfield. Just a minute, ladies. It was, um, 104 is Geisen. And 102 is Campbell. And then we need to make an entry that um, four day room sleepers then move to hotel.
Um, you just want us to move them? Do you want us to take them off our account or what? To hotel? All right. Okay. All right. Let's do the blue bunkies first. Let's stack them up first, then we're gonna do the mattresses on top of the bunkies. Okay? Use a snack. Like one. 